Hey guys, welcome back to Ginger Beater Quantics with Andrew. Today we're going to be talking about what is a sponge filter and how does a sponge filter work. Before we get started, I would just say that I think sponge filters are a great addition to any tank, uh, any size fish room, whatever you have. I think they are a fantastic option and are cheap to set up, cheap to run, and cheap to replace if anything ever happens to them. But there isn't any mechanical parts, so they don't really break down like a canister filter or hang on back filter would. So with that, I'll actually get into explaining what sponge filters are and how they work, but I think it is important for you guys to know up front that whatever size tank you have, be it a 10 gallon or 220 gallon tank, a sponge filter would be a great option for you and a great way for you to be able to filter your water to have happy inhabitants. A sponge filter is a type of mechanical and biological filtration unit. It doesn't do any chemical filtration, but it can convert your ammonia and nitrite eventually into nitrate as well as removing out detritus and debris within your tank. Uh, the way that a sponge filter works is pretty simple. It doesn't have any moving parts. It's very easy to maintain. What you have is a air line that is coming from an air pump. Yeah. So what you have is an air pump, air line, and a sponge filter as well as an air stone which is optional. And what you have is an air pump that is pumping air down the air line into the sponge filter. And inside the sponge filter, the air bubbles that are being pushed down are going to then start rising up through the, the lift tube here. And as that water or as that air is rising up, it is also going to draw water in with it as well and create a vacuum or create a, a flow or create whatever you want to call it up through there so as that air rises the water is also going to rise with it and to replace that water is then rising with the air water is going to be sucked through the sponge and then that will then rise up with the air to the top of your tank and then it will break and you'll have bubbles at the top of your tank and as that water is passing through the sponge that is being created by the vacuum of the air rising you're going to have your water being mechanically and biologically filtered at that point. So let me take the top off here and I'll show you what the actual inside of this looks like. And this is a sponge from Aquarium Co-op that I bought. I'm not sponsored by them though I'd love to, but I'm not. So with the sponge filter, so you can see at the bottom here, you have the where the air is coming in and then you have holes here where the air will then escape out. And you can attach a air stone at the very bottom of it and what the air stone does for a sponge filter is it makes smaller bubbles that are going to be less noisy for people that have it in an area that they don't want noise that isn't in a fish room. An air stone isn't necessary but it is a nice addition to your sponge filter specifically the aquarium co-op sponge filters. Not all sponge filters will have that ability. Some of them will just have uh, an airline slot somewhere else to put it into uh, other ones will not have the option to plug in a air stone and you'll be left with uh, just a, a naked nipple here that you wouldn't be able to plug anything into. So that's why I like the Aquarium Co-op ones better. But that isn't what this is about. This is about what is a sponge filter. So sponge filters also come in a variety of porosities. And all porosity means is how many pores are within the material that exists. So a higher porosity means that you're going to have more pores and a lower porosity means you're going to have less pores. And what that means for us in the aquarium hobby is that a higher porosity is going to mechanically filter the water better because all those little tiny pores are going to be better able to trap your uneaten food, poop, detritus, all that type of stuff better than say something that has a smaller number that has a fewer amount of pores. So the fewer amount of pores are larger and they don't trap as fine of particular matter that is in the water. So for you in your situation, you might want to opt to a higher porosity sponge filter that allows you to filter more mechanically rather than someone who just wants it for the biological purposes and the additional mechanical filtration is an added bonus on top of it. So a sponge filter is a great way to filter a five gallon tank I'm using one to breed my Celestia Prodanios, and if you guys are interested in that type of video, I'll leave that up here in the corner for you guys to check out. As well as for large 40 gallon, 50, 75, 100, 125s, I've used them in, in larger. There's really no limitation to the size 
of a system that you can use it in. The only thing that will change is the size of the sponge that you have. You're not going to want to put this huge sponge inside of a 10 gallon tank. You would probably want to put something a little bit smaller and more manageable because you're going to have a lesser bio load in there because you're going to have a lesser amount of fish and you won't need as much sponge to be able to filter it. In terms of cleaning sponges, uh, you can keep using them over and over and over again until they break down and no longer are usable. And that could take many, many years, if not decades, for that to happen. Uh, and changing and cleaning a sponge filter is pretty easy. Uh, it's pretty pain-free in comparison to taking apart a canister filter or a hang-on-back filter. All you have to do is take this out of the water. You can either use old tank water or tap water. If you want to err on the side of caution, you can use tank water. I use tap water and haven't had any problems with it. Rinse it out until it is no longer dirtying or fouling the water, making it brownish, and then you can plop it back in the tank. One way to make sure that you don't have a bunch of gunk come off your sponge filter as you are taking it out of the tank is to use one of the old aquarium store bags that you've got your fish in that's laying around and use that, put that underneath the sponge filter, come up around it and remove that from the tank. And when you remove it from the tank, all that dirty water that would otherwise have gone into the tank will stay within the plastic bag and then you can go off and rinse it and then plop it back into your tank. And once you put the sponge filter back in the tank. Some of that detritus and debris that was on there that you didn't get rinsed off is going to come off and that's not a huge problem. It will eventually get sucked up by the sponge filter again or will get removed by you in your water changes as you gravel vac. So I think sponge filters are an amazing option for filtration, especially if you're not looking at doing any chemical filtration. I think sponge filters are the way to go. Yes, they can be a little unsightly uh, in aquariums, but you can also learn to hide them or have fun creating escape that is uh, hide the sponge filter and you can either use some different aquarium plants to hide it or uh, different rocks or wood or other decorations to hide the sponge filter and you just see the bubbles rising in the tank. Lastly I have other videos that talk about how to set up air pumps properly so you don't end up killing your air pump in a power outage, um, how to set up your aquarium heaters, how to make their the longevity last and how to orient them so you actually get proper heating in your tank as well as how underground filters work is very similar to this. And I'll leave those videos uh, in the cards as well as in the description below if you guys are interested. So if you guys would like me to show you how I set up a sponge filter and what that looks like in terms of an installation, let me know in the comments below and I'd be glad to make a video. And if you guys have any other questions or video suggestions for me, feel free to leave them in the comments below and I will gladly consider uh, making that video to try to help you guys answer your questions. And with that, I'll see you guys in the next one. Have a blessed day.